I had my babies. Oh, this is going to be so fun. Okay, so we are going to be... <laughs> We are going to be doing our monthly TBR pick a little different. We have some special guests. We have Aurora and we have Tux. And they are so sweet, my little babies. They're huge. So this is, oh, Tuxie, a bit of a challenge. Um, I have a feeling it's gonna be hard to get Aurora to pick anything for me. She does not like snacks. So <laughs> it's probably gonna be this chunkster right here picking all the books for me, but we'll see. Um, oh my, okay, I'll come find you in a minute. Tux wasn't having it. Aurora's a, they're both really sweet, but Aurora's my girl for sure. So I found so many great books on my shelf for this month, and I'm really excited to see if the cats will actually help me pick them. I saw another channel, I think her name is Ashlyn. Um, I'll link her video down below. And she did a dog picks her books. And I thought that was so cute. I think it's going to be a bit more challenging having a kitty cat <laughs> do it. But we're going to give it a shot. Hopefully, at least my chunkster over there will bite the bullet and help me out and go for the snacks. So we'll see. Aurora, I'm probably just going to have to go off what she runs towards. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really excited. And... I'm curious to see how this is going to go, so let's give it our best shot. All right, so I'm going to show you the books that were my TBR that I want them to pick from. Hopefully, we have better luck with the odds of them actually picking because we have two cats. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to go about this, but it'll be fine. It's going to work. <laughs> okay, so first we have Promises and Pomegranates. This is book one of the Monsters and Muses series, and the cover is stunning. I'm really excited to dive into this. It's supposed to be like a dark romance. And then we have Fourth Wing. I finally found it. So I am really excited to dive into this. I loved the Aquatar series. This one's more like dragons and things like that. So I'm, I've never read anything like that. Fantasy is totally new to me. So I'm really excited to dive into this one. And it is August picks. So I want something a little summery. You wanna go? I want something a little summery and I am really into the Italian vibe right now. I would love to be in freaking Italy. But because I can't, I chose two Italian books. Third month in a row. Let's see if we get it. <laughs> it's our Italian summer. And then we have Only in Naples. Um, I, I really don't know what this one's about. So I'm kind of leaning towards this. Also, it's been in my month TBR three times in a row now. And it has not gotten chosen from any of them. <laughs> so I'm kind of rooting for this one. All right. Then we have some spicy books. We have Twisted Hate. This is the third in the Twisted series. And then we have Neon Gods. I heard this is really spicy. I have literally zero idea what it's about, but if it gets picked, I'll read the back for you guys. Then I'm feeling some Nicholas Sparks. I have so many books, a whole shelf dedicated to him, and I've only read two of them so far. So I really want to start knocking out some Nicholas Sparks. I have The Longest Ride, which is my favorite movie of his outside of Dear John. And I have True Believer. I don't know what this one's about at all, but this is a cowboy romance and I was just a sucker for that movie so I'm really excited to dive into the book uh yeah so obviously I'm leaning towards the longest ride hopefully my girl gets me that one and then we have my favorite authors Christina Lauren um they are just the best duet author ever I love all their books I've read so this is the soulmate equation no idea what this is about and then we have book lovers I tried one book from Emily Henry. It was um, The People We Meet on Vacation, and I didn't rate it very high. It was like maybe a three, I think. It just, I don't know. It was just kind of kind of boring, kind of anticlimactic. So I'm excited to dive into another one of her books. This one is ranked even higher, so hopefully this is a better pick. But yeah, between these two, I really, I really don't mind what gets chosen. Okay, one more minute. I'm cracking up because both cats are already sitting by the bedroom door trying to get out of here they want nothing to do with this video so this is going to be so funny and so hard hope i can catch them both <laughs> miss aurora you are the chosen one let's see what we can get you to do oh mommy wants you to pick fourth wing so if you could do that that'd be awesome um we have our little treats okay so miss aurora is not really 
snack driven tux is already coming he's like literally right below and i just realized i need to move the books back okay let's see see the box fourth wing remember mommy wants fourth wing okay go to a book <laughs> on promises and pomegranates. So does that count? Let's try over that. And a little more from you. You are a paid actress. A little more, please. Such a goof. Your sister is under the bed. Okay, so we have Neon Gods and Twisted Hates. This is really very difficult, so I need to be a superstar again. I know you love the camera. You are very handsome. Okay, you ready? Oh, I'm out of breath. Jesus, cats. Jeez. real superstar your sister's a little camera shy you are such a diva you really are and you look so mad you're so sweet yes you are listen i like dogs and we do have a family dog but i am a cat person through and through i love how chill they are i know not all cats are chill but mine are very chill and they just they never bother me Okay, so we have her final five books. I am really excited for this month. So we have Promises and Pomegranates. So the back is pretty short, so I'll go ahead and read it. Elena, to most, Cal Anderson is a villain. Harbinger of death, keeper of souls, frequenter of nightmares, Dr. Death, Hades and Carson Eight. They say he stole me, usurped my fiance, and filled my cracks in my heart with empty promises. 
and printed his crimson fingerprints on my psyche and tried to set me free. They're not wrong per se, except it was my choice to stay. And then Cal's point of view is, to most, Elena Riki is an innocent goddess of springtime, lover of poetry, angel of my nightmares. Little one, little one Persephone, personalified? Uh, that was like a tongue twister for me. <laughs> they say I ruined her, shattered her virtue, and devoured her soul like a succulent pomegranate. Embedded my evil as deep as I could possibly get and tried to set her free. They're not wrong per se, except it was she who ruined me. So that sounds really good. So this is the first book of the Monster Muses, and all of them have the like most stunning covers. All of them, literally. So I'm excited to get into this. Okay, then I wanted an Italian read. It was Our Italian Summer or um, Only in Naples. So Only in Naples one, and it sounds really cute. Lessons in Food and Familia from my Italian mother-in-law. So I'll read just some of it because it's, it's quite a long summary. When I saw the sea at Gata, Gata, G-A-E-T-A, Gata, Gata, Gata. When I saw the sea at Gata, I knew that Naples was near and I was coming home. In this enchantingly warm and witty memoir, American board Catherine Wilson recounts her adventures abroad as a three month re as a three month rite of passage in Naples turns into a permanent embrace of this boisterous city on the Mediterranean. All thanks to surprising romance, a new passion for food, and a spirited woman who will become her mother in law and teach her to laugh, sees joy, and to love. There is a chaotic, vibrant energy about Naples that forces you to let go and give in, writes Catherine. One evening, she meets handsome, studious Salvatore and finds herself immediately enveloped in his elegant mother, Raffaella, and the rest of the Avalon family. From that moment, Catherine's education begins. Never eat the crust of a pizza first. Always stand up and fight for yourself and your loved ones. Consider mealtime sacred. Food must be prepared fresh and consumed. And then it just continues on about Italy and her point of view. So that sounds really cute. I didn't know this was like a memoir. So that makes me even more excited. Okay, then we have Me on Gods. And I have seen this all over TikTok. So I had to get it just because it kept popping up and it seemed like something I'd be into. This is, I think it's a dark romance. Unspeakably Hot from Entertainment Weekly. He was supposed to be a myth. And from the moment I crossed the river Styx and fell under his dark spell, he was quite simply mine. So I think this is a dark romance for sure. Society Darling, Persephone. Ooh, these names. Oh my goodness, it's the only thing I don't like about fantasy. Okay. Society Darling, Persephone, Demi Troy. Plans to escape the ultra-modern city of Olympus. It starts over far from the backstabbing politics of the 13 houses. But all of that is ripped away when her mother ambushes her with the engagement to Zeus, the dangerous power behind Glittering City's dark facade. With no options left, Persephone, I, hopefully that is not her name. I'm going to have to look up some reviews because I just, I am not vibing with that. <laughs> like, that doesn't, it just doesn't sound, I have got to be butchering it. Let's just say that. I've got to be butchering it. Flees to the forbidden undercity and makes a devil's bargain with a man she once believed a myth. A man who awakens her to a world she never knew existed. Hades has spent his life in the shadows and he has no intention of stepping into the light. But when he finds that Persephone can offer a little slice of revenge he spent a year's craving, it's all the excuse he needs to help her for a price. Yet every breathless night spent entangled together, given Hades a taste for Persephone and Helga to war with Olympus itself to keep her close. This is a modern retelling of Hades and Persephone. I'm definitely butchering that. That is as sinful as it is sweet. All right, so that sounds really good. So it's supposed to be like enemies to lovers type thing. And then it's supposed to be bad guy gets the girl is what it sounds like. Or maybe he's misunderstood. We have The Longest Ride and I am obsessed with the movie. It is so, so good. I highly recommend watching it. Um, Nicholas Sparks, he's just, he's a classic guy. I love all of his books. I love how emotional they make you feel. I like how people can relate to his writing. Um, so again, this is a really long summary as well. So I'll just read a little bit. Um, 
Ira Levinson is in trouble at 91 years old in poor health and alone in the world. He finds himself stranded on his isolated embarkment after a car crash. Suffering multiple injuries, he struggles to retain consciousness until a blurry image materializes and comes into focus beside him, his beloved wife Ruth, who passed away nine years ago. Urging him to hang on, she forces him to remain alert by reminiscing about their lifetime together, how they met, the precious paintings they collected, the dark days of World War II, and its effect on them and their families. Ira knows that Ruth can't possibly be in the car with him, so he clings to her words and his memories. Reliving the sorrows and joys that define their marriage, a few miles away at a local bull riding event, a Wake Forest University senior's life is about to change. Recovering from a recent breakup, Sophia Danko meets a young cowboy named Luke, who bears little resemblance to the privileged frat boys she has encountered at school. Through Luke, Sophia is introduced to a world which the stakes are high, reward and ruined, and even life and death loom large in everyday life. As she and Luke fall in love, Sophia finds herself imagining a future far removed from her plans, a future that Luke has power to fulfill if the secret he's keeping doesn't destroy it first. And then just, it keeps going on and on. But yeah, this is a bull rider cowboy story, and it is so good. And the actor is amazing. The casting for all of his movies have been just chef's kiss i have loved all the casting but yeah definitely go watch this movie i can't wait to see what the book is like and then our final one i can't believe i'm reading another emily henry book <laughs> uh, so this is book lovers i really don't know what this is about nora stevens life is books she's read them all and she is not that type of heroine not the plucky one, not the laid back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora's a heroine for are her clients. For him, she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister Libby, which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for a month of August when Libby begs for her sister's trip away with visions of a small town transformation for Nora, who she convinced needs to become the heroine of her own story. But instead of picnics in the meadows or run-ins with a handsome country doctor or a bulging foreign bartender, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lasta, a bookish broading editor from back in the city. It would be a meet, it would be a meet cute if not the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. <laughs> okay, it's already much different than I thought it was gonna be. If Nora knows she's not the ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences, no editor worth their salt would allow. What they discover might be the unravel, the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. This one it has been raved a lot more than the one I did read, um, People We Meet on Vacation. So I'm excited to see what Book Lovers is about. Okay, so here's the wrap up. We have Book Lovers, The Longest Ride, Neon Gods, Only in Naples, and Promises and Pomegranates. So it sounds like a really good reading month. Once again, I am so excited. Um, I have been making my Christmas book list already because my mother asks in July every year. I think it's because she has so many people to shop for, you know, and her family is so large. That's easier to knock people out along the way. But I am having such a heyday adding books to that list. <laughs> um, so I need to get through my TBR now. Um, that way I can actually go into the new books. And I feel like the longer books sit on a shelf, they just become less desirable. Am I the only one that thinks that? It's like if I've had it for a year, all of a sudden it's like in the back burner and I want to read the new books I just got because they're new, fresh, what's being talked about. I want to see if I relate to their opinions or not. And yeah, I'm totally going through that at the moment. So I'm on a book buying ban. And yeah, I have... I have quite a few I need to get through. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed my cats and getting a little peek into my personal life. And I'm really excited to see what we think of these books. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to see my book wrap up on what I thought of these books. And go ahead and watch my July wrap up because it was a really good reading month. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you soon.